Hey, what's up? This is Shaheel. So, it's been a long time since I last uploaded a video. It's been like a year long. So, it's like... It's like a long time. But here I am. I'm back with the review for the MacBook Air M1. So, I've been using this machine for well over a month right now. And I've got a few things to say about this machine. So, let's jump into the video. But before we begin, let me tell you that this video is not going to be focusing too much about the specs and all the other little details about this machine. Most people already know that at this point, but this is going to be more focused on my experience of using this machine for, like I said, well over a month right now. But for those of you who don't, here's everything that you need to know about this machine. So this late 2020 model MacBook Air runs on the Apple M1 processor. This being the base model, it's got an 8-core CPU, a 7-core GPU, 8GB of unified memory, and 256 gigs of storage. It's got a 13.3-inch 2K Retina display, has the Apple Magic Keyboard with the scissor mechanism, which is much better, Touch ID for quick login and authentication, and a very good trackpad. It's got two USB-C ports with Thunderbolt USB 4 capabilities, and a headphone jack on the right side. And it all comes in a lightweight package of just about 1.3 kilograms. That's pretty much all the specs that you need to know and now we're going into the experience part and let's start off with the good things about the MacBook Air. And number one is the weight of this laptop. Like I said, this laptop weighs just about 1.3 kilos and that's very lightweight for a laptop in general. This makes your life a lot easier especially if you carry a laptop with you and travel a lot. Being this small, compact and lightweight, you can put this in basically any shoulder bag and do not have an issue with it. And that by itself is really handy. The next thing that I really enjoyed about this machine is the performance that M1 offers you. See the thing about M1 is that everything is unified and hence it's very much faster than a normal CPU. And by everything, I mean like the RAM, the CPU, the GPU and the storage, everything is just embedded into one chipset, the M1. No matter what you do with this machine, your everyday performance is still going to be very strong. Web browsing, media consumption and even editing videos are just buttery smooth. Especially applications like Final Cut Pro are very much optimized for the Apple Silicon and that makes sense because Apple hardware, Apple software, it's really great. Like you can comfortably edit full 4K projects without having to use proxies and if you know anything about video editing, you'll know that's great. And all of this runs in a system without an active cooling solution like a fan. But although there was this one time where the machine just heated up and I don't mean like warm kind of heat, I mean like hot kind of heat. So it was really hot and apparently for no reason. I was just googling something, I was browsing the web just like I do every single day but it got just like warm and it got hot really quick and I don't even know why. And that's weird but aside from that one time and that one problem, it's been really great. And that kind of performance combined with the great battery life of this laptop, it just makes for an absolute deadly combo. You see, I know that the battery was supposed to be good, but I never expected it to be this good. This is like crazy amounts of endurance. And by that, I mean consistently getting around 12 hours of screen on time with a full charge down to 20%. For my average usage patterns of a lot of web browsing and watching videos, this is just crazy endurance. It comes with a 30 watt USB-C charger that takes around two and a half to three hours to fully charge the machine. And with my kind of usage, I only charge this thing every two to three days. It's just great. Something else that I equally love about this laptop is the keyboard and the trackpad combo. This magic keyboard by Apple is really good to type a lot on. I type a script for this entire video and a lot more on the MacBook Air. You see, I had used this 2016 MacBook Pro, which had the butterfly keyboard. And the one thing that I had with that keyboard is that it didn't have a lot of travel and every time I clicked a key, I thought that I was just tapping too hard and I wasn't supposed to do that. I thought like every Apple keyboard was just like that and it was just me, but it turns out it's not. Not to mention all the other problems that people had with the butterfly keyboard in itself. Another thing is that I've got the ISO style keyboard because I bought this from the UAE and hence all the extra Arabic text on the keyboard and the tilt key placed near the shift key. That I absolutely hate. And something that I remember really enjoying on the 2016 MacBook Pro was the excellent trackpad it had. And as the same for the M1 Air 2. It's really responsive and the gestures are really good too. The only problem I ever had with the trackpad was the launch pad gesture. So you're supposed to do like a four finger 
pinch in and pinch out. So I found it kind of tricky to get out of Launchpad once you're inside. Or is it just me? And the next thing that I really enjoyed was the great speakers on this MacBook Air. The two strips of speakers that you see on the either side of the keyboard power the entire speaker system for this laptop. The speaker quality is just really good with great instrument separation and it has a decent amount of bass and it gets really loud for a speaker of that size. So I really enjoy watching movies and TV shows and even listening to music on this laptop and I really wish that I had some kind of way to just make you experience what that feels like, but we don't. It's kind of a bummer. And last but not least, the display experience has been very good. Be it watching normal YouTube videos or high-end HDR content, it is just simply great. So the display in itself is a 2560 by 1600 panel with a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's really sharp and it supports P3 white color gamut and it also has true tone which adjusts the color tone of the display to the ambient conditions. So basically adjusts how warm the display should be. And even the auto brightness is just excellent making gradual adjustments as the light gets brighter or darker. And those were just a few things that I really enjoyed about this machine. But this laptop, just like any other piece of tech, has got flaws. And let's discuss about some of the things that I really didn't like about this MacBook Air. First things first, the lack of ports is real. And if you have ever used a MacBook, you'd know the pain of having to carry around dongles. And just like me, you'll have to buy a separate dongle for you to be able to connect USBs or even SD cards. Something else that I didn't like about this was the hinge and apparently when it's a MacBook, it's supposed to be able to open with one hand and for some reason, my MacBook Air doesn't. So when I try to open the laptop with just one hand, the whole laptop just goes up with it. So I did the obvious thing that every responsible user should do. I googled the problem and sure enough, it's not just me. A lot of users just face a similar problem with their MacBook Airs too. And after that, I had contacted Apple support to see what they had to say. And then I got in touch with a rep who told me that it's just normal and apparently the new MacBook Airs are just too lightweight to be able for the hinge to just open on its own. So the laptop will go up with it. But what's even more confusing is that it may be because I've used it for a month right now, the hinges might have gotten loose. But now when I try to open it with one hand, I can. It works. I don't know, maybe it's just that the hinges are a bit too tight or something like that. I don't know, it's been fixed right now and it's running great right now, so I'm good. And the last thing I'd like to say is that coming over from Windows to Mac OS, it's that the, the learning curve is just a bit too much. Things just work a bit differently on a Mac when compared to Windows, like you don't actually quit a multi-window application when you just hit the red arrow. It actually closes the window, but it still keeps the app open in the background. Like, why? Why don't you just disclose that? Why? I don't know. And some things just don't even make sense. Like, when I'm using Mission Control and switching from one app to the other, why don't it just make the active window to the app that I have on the top? Why does it need to be always the previous app? And I've had other issues like not being able to see the data transfer speeds when I'm transferring the footage from my SD card to the laptop. Like, why don't you just give how much speed it's transferring it? It'd be so useful. But aside from a few quirky things like that, I have not had any problems using macOS coming from Windows, and I'm just loving this laptop as a whole. It's got everything that I need on a daily basis, and it's running really smooth. It's really fast. The battery's great. The trackpad, the keyboard, it's all good. If you want to buy it, I think you still can. In my opinion, it's a better value compared to the M2 MacBook Air, which got bumped up in price. If you had to buy a laptop under $1000, I think the M1 MacBook Air is still a really great option that you should consider and I will recommend it to you. And that's all for the review of the MacBook Air. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give this video a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos. And thanks a lot for watching. Until we meet the next time, goodbye.